Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Welcome back. So today's video, I'm digitally painting an eye, so I'm doing an eye study. And I want to show you the interface here in Photoshop. That way, if you wanted to at least understand a little bit of what I'm doing here, you can kind of follow along. So essentially, right now, I'm just mapping out the shape of the eye. And although this part would seem somewhat easy, I actually struggled in this area. I always struggle with this area when it comes to realism. Uh, something about trying to find the exact right shapes is difficult for me to see. Uh, it's probably one of the reasons why uh, you know I always gravitate towards imaginative stuff is because I can you know just put the lines in the structure wherever I want. But I like to study realism because it kind of brings me back to, well, reality in a sense and, and what things really look like. So I always start to paint in and then I'll realize, well, wait a second, the iris is too large or the opening of the whites of the eyes is off from one side or, or whatever. Um, now, luckily in Photoshop, there's a lot of ways to edit your work and move things around. But it, it just it's one of those things where I really want to hone my perspective my ability to see these flaws early on because it'll save you a lot of time when you're doing your paint work like for instance this painting you'll see by the end of it uh, it took me about almost three hours to complete uh, which is kind of silly for just an eye study uh, should be able to get that way way down to you know an hour or under uh, but it's just one of those things where when you're studying you know sometimes it's worth it to really delve into it so here you can see I start to edit even a little bit early on right here the shape of the eye right there I try to tuck it in so one of the things I was really studying with this particular rendition and here you see me making changes to the uh, sh size of the iris and this is where I really noticed that the shapes were just entirely off and the proportions were off so I'm trying to fix that but uh, one of the things that I really noticed with studying this was that the the shapes of the way the eye bends in to the tear duct and the way that it tucks up under the top eyelid uh, so that's a lot of what I was really trying to perceive because when I draw comics, it's real easy for me to make eyes look flat and I want to get away from that. And I think the best way to do that is to study realism and really understand how these uh, shapes uh, contour. And I was really trying to convey the the form of the eyelids wrapping around the spherical part of the eye. Uh, so hopefully I get that, but it's, you know, it's it's a constant battle you constantly do studies and I feel like an eye is always the best thing for me to come back to study realism because there's actually a lot of complexities to the eye you know even the eyelashes they're very tricky to get right they bend uh, in a 360 fashion all the way around the eye so so as you can see right there they actually come right out towards camera and it gets a bit tricky to draw that well where it doesn't look like there's an immediate shift in direction so you have to have some that come right out towards you and it seems like such a simplistic type of thing to draw or paint but it I don't know it actually ends up being kind of tricky for me so that's uh, one of the things that I need to continually work upon but you know if you've watched any of my work you'll see that I always do eyes it's it's kind of silly almost but I really think it's one of those things where you can gauge yourself and what you're perceiving uh, with the realism aspect you know, one of, the, one of the reasons I think that is because eyes are something that we're so used to looking at that we just immediately spot flaws. So it's really easy to, to look at your work objectively afterwards. Uh, sometimes it's hard when you're producing the work, I think. But when you're done, you can look at it and really see uh, if you got it right or you didn't. And, you know, people are going to easily be able to tell you that because, again, so many people are used to looking at eyes. Um, I would say it's the most identifiable, identif identifiable <laughs> sorry, part of the body, uh, you know, because that's the first part we interact with with other people, the face, but then, you know, always look them in the eyes, right? So, uh, so yeah, so here I start to add a little bit of texture, and I kind of struggle with that for a bit. I try a few of my texture brushes. Uh, by the way, I'll just let you know you can get my brushes on my Gumroad if you're interested in my Photoshop set. Uh, it's got uh, 50 different brushes that I use uh, for all my digital paint work. Um, so yeah, so one of the parts that I did think, uh, looking back, I think came out pretty good. I sometimes struggle with the the iris and getting the right kind of uh, inconsistencies or a variety of shapes and texture in the iris. And I think this time it came out pretty good. And one of the reasons being for that is I'm starting to realize with paint work that it's all about 
overlapping a variety of textures, a variety of tones, and really not just going for one particular type of thing. Like before with the iris, I would have just drawn a bunch of feathered lines in the same direction or a spherical direction from the pupil outward. And that's the wrong way to do it. You get a very tangent look, a very boring look. You got to have shapes going all in different directions. Uh, so I kind of been noticing that more and I tried to incorporate that into the iris and I think that part worked. Um, I'm also starting to get more depth on the eyelids. I think the top eyelid needed to be thicker. Uh, but I do like the part where it comes into the tear duct. That seems to be somewhat accurate. Uh, so, you know, again, these are always studies where I look at the work objectively and I go, okay, going into the next one, when I do this same study, you know, two weeks from now or a month from now, whatever I decide to do another eye or set of eyes, what can I do to improve upon it? And that's really the entire purpose of this type of video. Uh, it's, it's again, a constant battle with, within myself of how do I improve and how do I grow past my mental uh, barriers of what I'm not seeing and what I'm not doing right. Uh, the eyebrow, another thing that always tricks me up. You know, it's like I want to keep texturing it, and I, but do I make it too thick? Does it start looking manly? And all these things run through my mind as I'm doing it because I'll, I'll look at other renditions that I did and I go, man, I didn't get the eyebrow right. So um, just little things I think about as I'm doing this. So here I start to take light and paint back in some of the little textures of the skin and again this is one of those things where you got to be careful I, I tend to work with layers at this part just in case I want to soft erase some of it back and play with the blending modes because I feel like the texture you know if you provide too much texture to the skin uh, it's either going to make the skin look weird uh, maybe elderly when you're not going for elderly or uh, just flat out you know, making a woman look overly hairy or something, or just uh, too much grit to her skin. So it's really one of those tricky things. One of the things I will do is I'll I'll sometimes over texturize, but then I'll use uh, a filter like a Gaussian blur or blending modes to soften up that texture. So I think the texture does need to be there if you're going for any sort of realism, but you do have to really keep uh, an eye on that, so to speak, and make sure that it's not too much and that you don't overdo it. Like, for instance, the little glares on the back of the eye, I feel like they're too uh, far done. And I think I end up toning those back a bit. Um, but yeah, this was another area where I need to study it further because I was, I kind of felt myself struggling in this uh, department as well. But again, I would just err on the side of adding it. Make sure you add it because it's how you learn. And then just playing with the uh, ability to tone it back. So if you notice too, I tried to stay pretty far back and I actually worked with a very small file size on this one. The only reason for that is because it sometimes allows me to not think so much about overly detailing the work uh, and getting a certain softness to it, but I, I actually think I should have added a little bit more resolution to this file. And here I'm trying to get the reflection of the eyelashes in the iris. This is uh, kind of what I consider more the end of uh, touch-up work and that kind of thing, but it's it's where I try to start pushing a little bit more realism uh, just by adding little details that you know otherwise might get left out or whatever but um, it's really a, a nice little touch I think and then the skin here is still feeling a bit uh, soft in areas and too soft in areas but you know again that's something I'll have to get better at I think there's too many soft highlights uh, throughout and then here I'm adding color now the way that I do this is I add color modes over top and then I add some overlay modes. I'll use multiply for darkening things, uh, but it's pre predominantly color mode at first, then a few overlay modes and even a few color modes over top. So I use a few of them together. I don't just do it all in one layer. Um, then after I get to a certain level, I'll merge them together and then work off that flattened version. But just keep in mind that it's color mode, then overlay. Uh, multiply and then sometimes even like screen or color dodge to brighten up some uh, light source and some highlights. So here I start wanting to add a bit more color. Now this isn't in the study or the realistic shot that I was looking at. I just thought, you know, I wanted to, I always lean more towards animated sci-fi kind of feel. Uh, obviously this could just be considered an eye with makeup, uh, but I just, I started to do what I do and that's oversaturate and put in some 
uh, bright colors you know I just always think it's more appealing to do that so that's what I'm doing here and then I'm, I'm constantly taking the layer and then merging it down and then making a copy and either desaturating the copy and soft erasing aspects of it playing with layer levels uh, color balance just a number of things just to kind of tweak the the artwork you know so there you see I add a, a blur to it but then I erase parts of the overlapped uh, layer that's got a blur on it so that I can just have certain aspects of it blurred so that's always seems to be a really useful technique for just softening up parts of the illustration and that's pretty much it so hopefully this uh, video has uh, shown you a thing or two and been beneficial for you if it has be sure to like share and subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see in the future keep in mind that you can get my custom brushes and videos on my gumroad and I appreciate you stopping by and watching this. Keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.